Hello, my name is Mark, and I thank you so much for coming by today. If you're familiar with my work, you may recognize the strange and wacky characters I often create in a style that's uniquely my own. Working this way makes me happy, and from what I've seen, it makes my clients happy as well. But while I spent a lot of time in my youth imitating the comic art from Mad Magazine, Charlie Brown, and The New Yorker, I also spent a lot of my time studying fine art too, both at home and in taking classes. When I was about 12 or 13 years old, my parents signed me up for a still life drawing class at a local art museum. It was a class of about 20 students that were all about my age. Each session was spent drawing a different still life, usually with the typical setup of bottles and vases, a mirror, a bowl of fruit, all on a table with a tablecloth. I really enjoyed the class, but after a few sessions, I kind of felt like it wasn't much different than what I was doing at home or in school. So one day before class, my instructor took me aside, complimented the work I was doing, and suggested that the still life drawing class wasn't challenging me enough. I was surprised and I really didn't understand, but I was asked to collect my supplies and come to the classroom next door. When I walked in next door, there were about 10 students, all much older than me, probably in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. They were all set up and ready to work at their easels, waiting for me to come into the class. Some of them seemed amused that I was there because I was so young, while others seemed a little annoyed. At the front of the classroom was a small platform on the floor. It was impossible for me not to notice that there was a woman sitting on the platform and that she had no clothes on. <laughs> I was a little freaked out and had no idea what I had just walked into, but despite being completely nervous, my instructor guided me into setting up my easel, getting my supplies ready, and explaining that this was a life drawing class and how I would be drawing from a live model instead of still objects. I looked around the class and everyone was staring at me, including the woman on the platform. I was a bit horrified, so I kept my head down and I pretended to organize my supplies. My instructor was kind and pointed out that each area of the body was made up of little abstract shapes that I could draw just like I did in the still life class. Once I was all set up, my instructor left me alone and the class resumed. There was classical music playing on an old cassette player and the room smelled like paint thinner. I watched how everyone would look at the model for a long time and then begin drawing very intensely. I had no idea what I was doing, and I felt a little uncomfortable looking at the woman on the platform, so I just imitated what everyone else was doing. But once I began to draw, something strange happened. I began to see those little abstract shapes that my instructor told me about on the woman's body, and how the curved lines and shadows were so much more complex than the bowls of fruit or the wine bottles. When the session was over, we all walked around the room to look at each other's work. I was thrilled at the positive compliments and support I got from the older people, and I was amazed to realize that my work was as good, if not better, than some of the other students in the class. After that first session, I couldn't wait to go back. For the first time in my young life, someone was challenging me to draw differently than I'd ever drawn before. It didn't take long before I stopped seeing a woman on the platform with no clothes, and I began to see it as a figure model displaying the most fascinating shapes, lines, and shadows all hidden within the model's form. I had not only been challenged in my drawing abilities, but also in how I saw things around me. Not only did my skills improve because of that class, but my perspective of how I looked at other people and the work that they did had been enlightened. To this day, I still believe that that experience helped me grow and grow up to being a more mature young man than I was when I first walked into that classroom. And that kind of challenge has presented itself to me several times throughout my life, usually when I needed it most and not always having to do with art. I learned early that challenging our skills and the process of how we work is arguably the truest way to grow and expand those skills and raise our work to an advanced level. And this holds true in any creative field or interest where growth is needed to get better. So, why is it so important to challenge ourselves and our skills? I mean, what's wrong with being comfortable where we're at or with what we do? Well, for me, a large part of my career relies on maintaining and being consistent with the style that I've developed over years, whether in graphic design or illustration. However, when it comes to my own personal work, I find that creating the same predictable style leaves me craving something fresh and something new that I can apply to my work, like the way I crosshatch or how I fill an area with color. Back in the early 2000s, when Zentangle became popular, it opened doors for millions of people who wanted to be better artists but didn't know how. 
It was a revolutionary way to get people to challenge their creative skills, engage their creative spirits, and to see a significant difference in their work. And that's why it's so important to continually challenge ourselves, our skills, and our perspective. But again, for what reasons is it important to challenge ourselves? Well, I'd have to start with the first reason being for individual growth. If we nurture a seed, it will grow in three directions, up to the sky, down into the earth, and out into its surrounding area. By challenging ourselves, we also grow in three directions as well, mentally, physically, and spiritually. When we don't challenge ourselves, we set limitations on the dimensions which we can grow in. But when we do challenge ourselves, we expand those dimensions which we can grow in, leaving room for even more growth to come with more challenges. The second reason is for confidence. When we become locked in a routine of creating the same thing over and over, we also become locked into a feigned sense of confidence that doesn't promote creative growth. We get comfortable and complacent, satisfied with the ability to rinse and repeat the same work without question. But when we recognize that stepping outside our routine and challenge ourselves with something that actually removes comfort and gets us to break a sweat, then we experience creative growth and genuine confidence, unlocking ourselves and opening up to all kinds of new directions and possibilities. The third reason is for personal connection. By challenging ourselves in any way, we engage in a personal competition that exposes our limits and pushes the boundaries of what we can and cannot do. A few months ago, I took on a 50-foot mural project. It was a scale far larger than I'd ever tried to do before. But, because I know that taking on a challenge will test my skills and my abilities, I accepted without hesitation. And it was a great experience, and I learned more about myself in the process than I actually did about my work. Taking on a challenge is a way to better understand what we're capable of, or as they used to say, what we're made of, and to find that personal connection between ourselves and our creative spirit. The fourth reason is to gain knowledge, experience, and awareness. The best thing about taking on a challenge is that we open ourselves up to vulnerability. We expose the weaknesses of what we can't do. And by taking part in a self-competition and completing that challenge, even if we're not successful fully, we turn that vulnerability into strength. By immersing into the challenge, it forces us to take risks, confront what we don't know, and to enlighten us sublimely as to how we fit in with the world around us. The result is that we gain valuable knowledge, experience, and awareness that we didn't have before. The knowledge of information, tools, and effects. The experience of process, time, and problem solving. And the awareness of how we affect the things and people around us, and in turn, how they affect us as well. In essence, we gain a fulfilling sense of what we can do and what we can accomplish more than before we took on the challenge. The fifth reason is to improve skills. So when we challenge ourselves and try something we're not familiar or comfortable with, we make that personal connection. And with that connection, we develop the interest, patience, and passion to improve our skills. Like a pen and ink artist trying watercolors for the first time, an Italian chef cooking Asian cuisine, or a crafting artist creating a polymer clay sculpture. It's like riding a bicycle or hitting a tennis ball. The more we put our skills to the test, the more our skills will improve. It's the theory behind the old adage, practice makes perfect. And the last reason I'll give today is to increase our value. In the film Batman the Dark Knight, the character The Joker makes the statement, if you're good at something, never do it for free. <laughs> of course, in the context of the film, it's not very appealing, but the point of the quote holds a very precise meaning. When we've achieved a level of individual growth that has developed our confidence, personal connection, knowledge, experience, and awareness, and advanced our skills, then we, as with any entity, have value. A medical student will not be hired by a hospital and paid a large salary because they haven't acquired those attributes that give them credibility and legitimate value. Yet, a proficient surgeon who has studied and been in the field for years would receive a large salary because they have. This is true in every field, especially in the creative fields. By increasing and improving our attributes, we increase the value of our work and therefore ourselves. And the best way to improve those attributes is by continually challenging ourselves, whether by taking classes, taking on diverse projects, or building a resume that gives us the same credibility and legitimate value. 
Of course, just challenging ourselves won't increase our value unless we're looking to be compensated or recognized for the work we do. And like that quote says, if we're good at something, then we deserve to be paid when someone wants it. Now, there are plenty more reasons why we must continue challenging ourselves to grow and enjoy the benefits of becoming more proficient with our skills. For me, after all these years, I continue to challenge myself by drawing an old-school still life like this avocado painting, or signing up for an open studio life drawing class whenever I can find one. But how do you challenge yourself to ensure that you're keeping your skills fresh and maintain that connection with your creative spirit? I'd love to hear what your thoughts are in the comments below if you care to share. For now, I thank you so much for watching today. I hope this video was helpful in some way. And if you haven't subscribed, please do and I'll be happy to bring more content like this in the future. As always, I'm grateful for your time and I hope you're staying healthy. Thank you again so much. Take care and God bless.